Thank you, Council. I'd like to open up the meeting of the whole to discuss. Let me get my glasses on, folks. Arica Industries 2017 Annual Report. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as most of you know, Aggregate Industries currently operates a stone quarrying operation, an asphalt plant at 55 Russell Street in West Peabody. As required in the special permit approved by the City Council in October of 2002, Section J of that special permit requires the applicant to submit an annual report containing operational details and summaries of the air quality, water quality tests, and noise monitoring reports. Aggregate Industries filed the 2017 annual report with the city clerk and copies were also delivered to the various departments. The report was thorough and totaling over 700 pages. However, I just want to discuss and reference a few items tonight. I want to make sure that we do leave time for residents to have an opportunity to speak if they wish in addition um, to my fellow counselors. We also have representatives from Aggregate Industries here tonight to answer any specific questions that anyone might wish to ask them. Um, just touching on 2017, there were a total of seven blasts that occurred from May through November 2017. Uh, there was only one property damage claim from June uh, that was submitted in the 2017 year. While there were no violations found or notated by the fire department relating to this blast uh, associated with the claim, the resident's claim was addressed by Aggregate Industries. I should make it clear that even one incident is frustrating to that effective resident, even if it's considered by some to be minor. The annual report contains detailed report, the annual report contains uh, details for each blast of the quarry during the year. And while reviewing the report, I noticed an interesting comment from the May 18th, 2017 blast report, which begins on page 39. And I guess I just want to bring this uh, as part of a discussion overall and then move on to some of the other items. The quote on the blast report or notes says, quote, shot loaded well, no issues. Some pole pump was not able to be moved out of the way prior to blast. Bob Gost signed to hold harmless, uh, end quote. I'm not experienced in blasting operations, but this would seem like an unusual practice to blast with an object that could potentially adversely affect a person or property in the surrounding area. And I guess at some point I'd like to make sure that someone from aggregate come up and answer that um, and we can go through that. Um, and I just want to finish up with a couple different things. We are certainly discussing the 2017 annual report, but I do want to just quickly touch on, you know, kind of where we're at right now. Um, we did have a meeting uh, at Aggregate Industries uh, with the Neighborhood Committee uh, in uh, late March and discussed the plan for lasting for 2018 season. Uh, as most of you know, uh, the initial blast what occurred on Thursday, April 5th. There was some noise complaints uh, made to the fire department as a result of this blast, although it was apparently in compliance with allowable levels. I was very disappointed, however, to hear that two residents who called directly over to speak to the plant were not treated in a respectful manner by that local plant management. It shouldn't matter who called, but one of the residents was actually uh, someone who was affected by a fly rock incident a few years ago. This is unfortunate for many reasons, but certainly not fair to the neighbors who abut your business. We need to have good communication between all parties. As a result of the complaints from the April 5th blast, Chief Pazin requested that any planned blasting be postponed so the city could meet with the main drilling blasting contractor to address resident concerns. The meeting with the blasting company took place on April 12th, and Councils Melville and Rosinal also attended. Second blast occurred this Tuesday, April 24th, and there were no complaints from the community. I'm hopeful that the rest of the blasting season goes smoothly. So I guess, um, didn't know if it would be possible just to kind of bring up uh, whoever wanted to chat from Aggregate Industries just to address the first question on that, and I just have a couple small notes. Um. Absolutely. I just want, if I, if I may, um, earlier our elevators were down, they're up and running, so folks who who had a half of the chair uh, up the stairs, the elevators are open. Thank you to Tim who got right on it and got them fixed. I apologize that I did not make the, uh, the notice uh, mention this just prior. So uh, again, anyone who needs to use the elevator, they are fixed. Thank you, Tim. Would you like to bring up the uh, arrogant industry to do their report and then uh, the, sure. uh, the neighbors first? 
Arrogate, please come up and please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, my name is Lisa Young. I'm the Regional Land and Environmental Manager for Aggregate Industries. My office is located at 1715 Broadway in Saugus, Massachusetts. I'm joined this evening by Rob Robinson, our Asphalt Operations Manager, and two uh, members of our, uh, from Maine Drilling and Blasting uh, that coordinate all of our blasts and do the blasting on site for us. Uh, so in regards to the question on blasting, I'm gonna defer to, to Maine Drilling and Blasting for that. Good evening, Kevin Godfrey, uh, 55 Holly Hill Circle, South Weymouth, Mass. I work for uh, Maine Drilling and Blasting as a regional superintendent and a blaster. Uh, <clears throat> so you had asked a question about the, uh, the notes in blast report and shot number two. Shot loaded well with no issues. Sump hole pump was not able to be moved out of the way prior to the blast Bob Goss signed to hold harmless. So we were blasting in close proximity to the, the sump hole with a very expensive electric pump in, in the hole. Uh, we had prior met with uh, the quarry they were gonna move it to a safe location before we blasted. But due to circumstances, they couldn't get it far enough away for what we were comfortable with. So at that point, we drafted up a, a quick uh, hold harmless agreement that uh, if in fact that we did do damage to the pump that that, that we would not be responsible for it. Okay, and just a, a question, if I could, to Mr. President. Um, certainly, their concern, and, and possibly yours initially, was the damage to the, the pump, right? Obviously, an important part of the, the quarry operations, but conceivably, could have that have been affected and, and you know, I guess, um, misdirected elsewhere across the property? Uh, it, the, 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 the pump was situated within the blasted area, so where the rock was expected to land, that's okay. where the pump was. Okay, understood, but the reason why you held it held harmless was more just for the property damage, not any third party liability to anyone surrounding. Correct. Okay, just want clarification, thank you. Thank you. Any counselors? Councilor Sassler. Thank you. Um, so I, I um, for the quarries out of uh, knowledge, I, I represent Wood 5, Wood 5 borders the quarry, and I have seen an uptick in um, some blasting um, concerns in my own neighborhood, actually, over the last, uh, last year or so. Um, one thing I did, I had the opportunity to meet with Maine Drilling, not about the quarry, but they do some other blasting up at the dump. Uh, but one of the issues that came up with, the, uh, with, with, your, with your company and uh, with the chief, uh, the fire chief present, was a suggestion, and you can blast when you want, we understand that, but the chief had mentioned the fact that it seems like when blasting is done from the late spring to the early fall, when there seems to be more leaves, more coverage, that the complaints are minimal. So I'm just going to throw that out there that if that's something that you can look as you look at your blasting schedule for 2019, that that's a possibility. I think everyone acknowledged it, but we also acknowledge that you have the right to blast when you want to blast, but it certainly is something with his 20 years of experience with blasting that he uh, stated that unequivocally, that's something that does help out keeping the, I don't know, uh, I don't know what the correct terminology is, I don't wanna say reverberation, sound, whatever it is, but it might be something you might wanna look into. Um, also, it's my understanding from looking at your report, you have four seismographs um, that will do measurements um, after you do a blast. One of those seismographs is a place called Quarry Gate. Um, can someone tell me wh wh where is Quarry Gate? I'm not familiar Qu with that. Quarry Gate number five is uh, located along the walking path uh, okay. between the, the quarry itself and the, there's a pump house over there with some pumps. And, and so now, as you're getting deeper from what I understand into the hole, it's getting deeper, the blasting. My question is, is it something where possibly, as I said, I'm on Benevento Circle. You can look at the map after the meeting off of Goodale Street. They're getting more of an impact over there. Is it something that uh, you might want to consider moving one of the seismographs further out away from, the, uh, from the, the hole so that you can get a better read as far as we know what's going on next to the hole, but it's the people who are calling with concerns further away from the hole about maybe using one of those seismographs and moving further away from the blast site? Um, I believe 
the special permit dictates where the seismographs need to go, and those are the locations. So currently, we run four seismographs. Uh, at the second shot of uh, blast of this year, we added a fifth seismograph after okay. we met with the counselors and in, in the, the fire chief okay. at number 23 Styles Drive. Um, we could float that another seismograph into a different area. So if someone has a concern, they could call the fire department, they could call us, and okay. we, would, uh, we would add another seismograph. Okay. So, you know, within reason, if sure. available. So consider, consider me as a resident. You can take this, Lisa. I'm making that request to maybe looking at that. There's a formal request of making either an added, moving one or making an additional one. Um, then the other, the other question that came into play was that uh, regarding uh, pumping of the quarry in the amount of water that you've pumped has gone up significantly. In 2015, you pumped approximately 117 million gallons of water. Fast forward two years later, 2017, 185 million gallons of water. So that's about one and a half times more than you did in 2015. Um, can you just address why that's happened? I'm going to have Lisa take care of that. Thank you. Just before we go to that question, do you want the seismograph at your residence or somebody else's? Um, or do you, you want to let me know? I'll, I'll let you know, but there was a specific resident who uh, has been questioned, so I will, I will reach out to you and get back to you on that. And I do have your email. I appreciate that, and I'll get back to you on that. But I'm going to say probably in the Gooddale, Benevento Circle neighborhood area. Councilor O'Neill. Just a point of order. I want to make sure that we're careful with, uh, you know, the seismograph changes. A lot of these have been uh, taken a lot of time by my predecessors and the neighbors to make sure that the neighborhood and the, the abutting residents, um, um, you know, they're protected and we're measuring those type of uh, areas more um, uh, closely than we would if someone was farther away. I'm not opposed to looking at some of that, but once again, if we open up certain factors on the special permit, the whole thing would be reviewed. And I'm not sure that that's something we, we should be looking uh, to do. And then just a certain uh, comment, to be clear that um, the aggregate, in, for people who may be watching, aggregate industries cannot blast whenever they want. They are allowed to do it uh, on a once per week. And then certainly if there's a weather issue, they can do it up to two times during that week. I just want to clarify that. Thanks. So, and I appreciate that, Council. Just a point of information, I was not looking to take away any of the four existing. I would just be looking to add one. And what I mean by blasting whenever they want, I'm talking about seasonal, but yes, as you said correctly, they have a, a schedule and it's the Thursdays. And then if the Thursday's no good because of where they move to Tuesdays. But uh, back to the, the water issue, if you could yes. talk about that. So uh, typically the, the pumping of the water is related to the weather. So if it's a dry year, we're not going to pump as much. Um, we use the on-site quarry water for our dust suppression as well. Uh, so in a dry year, we would definitely not pump as much. Um, I don't have the 2015 figures in front of me, so I can't compare directly, but typically that's what it's a, in correlation to. So nothing to do with anything from the Ipswich River leaking into the base or anything of that nature? Not okay. that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm all set at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ozano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to aggregate. Um, I know you had mentioned that there were seven blasts last year, and I know that's down from what you're capable or, or able to do per the permit. Do you have any expectations regarding number of blasts for this year? Um, that would really depend on the demand of the quarry, how much, how much, how much rock they need to produce to supply their customers. So it could be anywhere from, you know, 12 to 20. Through the chair, but you don't have any estimate, you don't have any rough estimate, you're just basically going to go on supply and demand. Rob Robinson, operations manager uh, for Asphalt. Um, 1715 Broadway, Saugus. So the numbers that we have uh, on, our predict on our forecast for this year are similar to last year, but it depends on the market demand. And hence that's, that's I mean, we could be at 10 blasts, we could be at 15 blasts. I, I just wanted some parameters so that any neighbor that's watching, any neighbor that's here in the audience would have a rough idea of what they're looking at moving forward okay so uh, thank you okay 
Just, just uh, whilst I'm up also, I'd like to address, um, apparently there was two complaints that you, you mentioned and they, the complainants were not happy with the way that they were responded to, is that correct? Yeah, through you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, they, they called over because of the initial blast on April 5th and um, uh, long-time residents, and uh, apparently in both cases they were met with, um, uh, the exact quote on one of them was that um, this is the first blast of the year, is this the way it's gonna be going? You know, it was almost like they treated them like um, uh, children instead of saying, okay, you know, you know, these are people who are calling with a, a concern to the place where you know uh, the event occurred, and they were met in in in, in both cases uh, dismissively, and were not pleased about it. Um, okay, so um, I'll take that on and I'll investigate that. I am aware of one of the complaints uh, that uh, there was a conversation afterwards, and I was informed of the conversation that took place, but uh, I wasn't aware of a second one. So uh, I'll look into that when we get back and. I apologize for anything like that, that that comes over. If we do come over incorrectly, we will put it right. And we're very, very concerned and we do want to have a good relationship with the neighborhood. We always have done. So we will follow up on that. Council Neil, maybe you can... Yes, sir. I, yeah, we, can, we, we can talk about that um, sure. uh, after me. I didn't want to use names or whatnot, but like I said, you know, and um, uh, just concerned that that was the first blast. And these are folks who, like I mentioned, one of them had, um, I mentioned specifically the Fly Rock issue. And um, so there, there, there is uh, heightened awareness of that at the longtime residents, and it shouldn't matter if they're heightened um, because of past issues uh, or claims uh, or whether the new residents. Uh, so certainly I just wanted to make that comment that, um, I know you folks are trying to, you know, to, to, to work with the neighborhood, um, the surrounding neighborhood. I get that, but I just want to make that point that uh, where it happened, um, it, we just want to kind of move more smoothly going forward. That's just my sense. I have no issues personally. Okay. You folks have all been professional, but these are long, one of them I've known for over 45 years, so I don't know them to be uh, anything but uh, rational. Right. I just wanted to, just wanted to come back on, on your question, that's all. Okay. Councilor Sassler? Yes, there was one question I did forget. Um, we had granted you folks a special permit in 2017 for the electrical building to be built. Just curious the status of that. Is that complete? Is that under construction? Where are we on that? The building is uh, completed, uh, or it's in the, it, we actually started uh, running the operation today for the first time. And um, yes, we, we got the building up. We got it all, so I, I think it's been signed off. I, I'm not sure. Um, but um, we're still in the early stages of, of commissioning, and we'll follow up, and um, I, we'll get back to the, the building inspector or, and the electrical inspector as well. But all the permits went through as well. Thank you. Any other councillors at this time? Councillor Melville. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know we have some residents that are here. Where they, uh, they, and and um, I have had I had an opportunity to spend some time with them as well prior to, and actually. Uh, Spent some time with the fire chief, as was noted before, and some of the blasting folks. And um, I, it's been a learning experience for me as a new counselor. Um, but I would defer to some of the questions they might have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors at this point? Ms. Young, do you have anything else to add at this point? No, thank you. If the um, audience, anyone in the audience would like to speak, please step forward. Please give your name and address for the record. Mary Callahan, 56 Russell Street. It's just to the blaster. It's just uh, because the first blast was um, the way it was, and we had so many complaints. I'm curious, can you uh, have a seismograph mounted near the houses instead of in front of them on the ground? Is there any capability of mounting it on at a house? Just to get really good, to let you know how they're feeling in there, to outside, because if I step outside, the blast isn't as great as it is in your home. Right, so, so we set up the seismographs in between the structure, oh, sorry, we set up the seismographs in between the structure and the blast, but we can uh, affix it to the foundation of the house, which we have, we do it at, uh, over at 16 Wentworth. This is affixed to the house already? Not permanently, we do oh, it permanent. on the daily. But you can, you have yep. the flexibility? Yes, we can do that. Do you think we could do that with one of the seismographs? Certainly. In, in a predominant area where you're going to do most of your blasting? We could do it at the closest structure, depending on 
we were blasting. Do you think that that is something? Do you think that that's something that would be helpful? We we can certainly can do it. Yes. Okay. I I mean, as far as readings, you're the one that you know um, does this for I, a living. I, I mean. I, I want you know, to know. We, we have good coupling with the ground. We, what we do is we actually bury it into the ground. We don't just stick it on the lawn. Mm -hmm. It becomes part of the ground, which is where you're going to get your best uh, sense of what's going on. Even so at, we, at Nine Styles Drive, it is too? Nine Styles Drive is, yes. It it's is. Buried in the ground. Okay. All right, thank you. In the, mul you know, in the mulch bed where, you know, underneath, we dig it out and, and bury it. Okay. Maybe we could have one of the um, seismographs put it like that and... I know we have one that we kind of float around with. Yeah, we, well, we, yeah, we, could, we, could, we could certainly do one. And where is the gate that you put it on? Quarry Gate 5, that is, is that on, the, on path? the walking path. On yes. the walking path, I thought it was. Okay, thank you. Yep. Ma'am, maybe we can, you can work with Councilor O'Neill to set up a, um, a spot uh, on a house, Councilor. You could work with the uh, neighbors for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there any other neighbors or residents that would like to speak? Any others? Don't be shy. Anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. Council O'Neill. And, and just uh, one small request. I know we talked about in the, um, the preseason blast meeting. Um, the annual report I, I mentioned was very thorough, but if there's a way, it was on, um, let me just go to that, sorry. Um, it was on the uh, page 734, the proposed quarry development plan. Um, I, I was just uh, requesting as someone who's new to looking at these reports, all the information was there in terms of the plan volume and cubic yards and tonnage. Um, but if there was some way that you could um, in the future uh, put some of that information down below so someone who, like me, looking at this and maybe in some of the other departments who aren't familiar with some of that data, just to, to uh, put it down in a, in, a, in a, I guess, an easier read to, you know, spot, if you will. Clearly the information was there, it just, you know, didn't jump out and, you know, Yes, I, I made a note of that at our preseason meeting, and we will work that into the report next year. Great, thank you. I, like sure. I said, it's just a minor thing. Yeah. Chris Dowling, like to have anything to say? Captain? I don't have anything to say. No, nope, I'm just here. If to answer anything. We do have a, um, a letter from Ms. Cameron. I would like to make a motion to accept if we need to. Councilor? It was part of the uh, annual report, so I don't think we have to. Okay. Um, Sharon couldn't be here, but she talked about it in the, in the memo, the, uh, the health department memo, um, that they reviewed all of the, um, the air quality and, um, uh, and, and noted that you know, they complied with all testing um, and there were no issues noted. Anything else, anybody else? Not hearing anyone who wants to speak. Need a motion to approve the annual report. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, move that the City Council approve the 2017 annual report prepared and filed by Aggregate Industries. So moved. Call for a roll call, please. Councilor O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Matsoulis. Manning Martin? Yes. 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 Melville? Yes. Gravel? Yes. Charest? Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Motion to adjourn.